Hey guys, what's up? This is Neat here, and today at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, Apple announced iOS 6. This is the next major software update for Apple's line of iOS devices, and will be made available to the public sometime this fall. The list of supported devices include the iPod Touch 4th generation, the iPhone 3GS and up, as well as the iPad 2nd generation, and the new iPad. However, even if your device is on the supported device list, it doesn't mean you will get all the new features. Some of these new features require the latest hardware that the iPhone 4S and the new iPad would have that let's say an iPhone 3GS wouldn't. So if you do have an older device, just be aware that not all the features in this video will necessarily be on your device when iOS 6 is released. With that being said, I do have my iPhone 4S on camera here, and you will see in the About section of Settings it shows version 6.0, and in this video I'm just going to be demoing off the prominent features that Apple introduced at their keynote address today, so you guys can get a better look at how those work. Also, Apple did state there are around 200 new features in iOS 6, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see future videos uh, containing those uh, more minor features. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So the first feature that I'm going to talk to you guys about is Siri. And the first thing that Apple did was made Siri available on the new iPad, and for the most part it works exactly like it does on an iPhone 4S, and I will demo that for you guys in a future video. The next thing that Apple did was teach Siri three new things. These include sports, movies, and restaurants. So with sports, you can pretty much ask Siri anything you want. You can find out stats on a professional player of any sport. You can ask about the scores of games, and you can also ask uh, what time and place a game is taking place at. So let's go ahead and ask Siri a sports-related question. Who has a better field goal percentage, LeBron James or Kobe Bryant? James averaged a better field goal percentage last season. So not only does it answer my question, but it also brings up a lot more information about these two players. Uh, you can see LeBron James stats right there and Kobe Bryant stats. Next we'll take a look at movies. I want to watch a movie at AMC theaters. Okay, here's a theater matching AMC nearby. So it finds the AMC theater that's nearby me, and it pulls up the movies that are currently being shown at that theater. If you select one of the movies, it's going to provide you with some basic information about that movie, as well as ratings from Rotten Tomatoes. And if you scroll down here, you can see what time that movie is playing at that theater near you, and you can go ahead and buy tickets if you would like. Then we'll take a look at restaurants. I want to eat at an Italian restaurant. six Italian restaurants. Four of them are fairly close to you. So what it's doing here is pulling uh, information from Yelp.com uh, related to restaurants that are nearby me. So you'll find if you select one of these restaurants, you'll see the pricing there, uh, the ratings from Yelp. If you select it, you can go ahead and view those ratings. Uh, you can also view the information about that business and the location of it. And you can also, Apple has also integrated the open table services. So if you want to make a reservation at a restaurant, you can do that as well. And then the last thing that Apple has done uh, with Siri is the ability to open apps from Siri. So if I just say, open Safari. you'll see that it opens Safari uh, right from Siri. So those are the things that Apple has added uh, in terms of new features for Siri. So the next feature that we're going to take a look at is Maps, and the first thing you'll probably notice is the updated Maps icon right there. If we go ahead and open it up then, you're going to notice something that is very unfamiliar, and that is because Apple has removed of Google Maps support and is now relying on their own in-house mapping solution. And uh, the map elements here are vector based, meaning that the graphics and text, or the graphics and text information is going to remain visually appealing no matter how far you zoom in, so that's nice. And uh, also then, uh, they have turn-by-turn -turn navigation now integrated, so uh, if you want to type in uh, the directions of a place that you want to go, like I've already done here, it will provide you with these routes, and then you can go ahead and select Start, and it will give you turn-by-turn -turn navigation to that place using Siri's voice. Now, I won't be able to demo that for you, of course, because I am not moving or driving in a vehicle, uh, but to give you an idea of how it works, if you select this uh, checklist here, or this uh, outline list here, it shows you uh, just an outline of the route that you would have to take, and all this would be spoken by Siri, and the direction would kind of appear on the map as well. Uh, the next thing that's also nice about these turn uh, about the turn by turn navigation is that uh, it can tell you if there's traffic in an area and it will may uh, suggest that you take an alternate route in order to arrive at your destination quicker. It can tell you if there's construction on a road as well as an accident. So that's some nice stuff there. Uh, the next thing that we're going to take a look at then is the 3D maps and also the uh, flyover view. So we'll go ahead and clear this out of here 
and I'm going to type in Sydney Opera House. This is what I was looking at earlier. And we'll let that load up here. Uh, so this is where it is right now. And what we can do is enable this 3D mode so it makes it uh, feel as if you were there. And if we go ahead and zoom in, and then we switch to the uh, satellite view, you'll get a nice view of actually what this area looks like. So uh, the 3D gives you a nice effect uh, in combination with the satellite. So you can see the Sydney Opera House there. And uh, Apple has integrated this for some of the major cities uh, in America. So you can take a look over this. And this is called Flyover, so it kind of feels as if you're actually flying over the city and taking a look at the buildings uh, that are there. So that's pretty cool stuff that Apple has added in the Maps application. Next up we'll talk about Facebook integration in iOS 6 and Apple's pretty much doing what they did with Twitter in iOS 5 but now just with Facebook. Uh, so you'll now see the Facebook option right here next to Twitter and if you open that up you'll see that you can log in with your account as well as install the Facebook app and Apple's also pr providing some other nice features. Uh, one of them is with calendars. So uh, it usually shows on Facebook on the sidebar there when it is someone's birthday and now that information can be applied directly to your calendar uh, so you know when it is someone's birthday through notification without actually having to log into Facebook. Uh, with contacts then, with anyone that you're friends with on Facebook, that information can be applied directly to your contacts application. Uh, so that's nice. And Apple is also doing the contacts uh, information sharing there with Twitter as well. Uh, also then, with these two social websites, Apple is now adding a new widget in Notification Center. So you can uh, select tap to tweet or tap to uh, post a status on Facebook. And those two features are also available to do directly through Siri. And then one last thing with the Facebook integration, if you open up the App Store, Apple will now allow you to like apps uh, that are available for purchase. The next feature that we're going to take a look at is how the phone application interacts with the lock screen in iOS 6. So I'm going to go ahead and call my iPhone real quick. And we'll wait for that phone call to appear. And you see here when that happens, there's this new little phone icon right there. If we slide that up, you'll have two options, reply with message or remind me later. We'll select reply with message. And what this will do is allow you to select, uh, select one of these items right here, and it will send that as a text message to the person who called you. So if you don't want to take the time to actually answer the phone, maybe you're in a meeting or something, you don't want to disrupt it, you can quickly send a text message to that person by selecting one of these options, or you can choose custom, and you can send your own individual message right there. Now you can change those uh, three defined uh, reply with message items right here within settings if you go into phone and you go to reply with message you can change uh, what those options state right there and then the other option was remind me later uh, with if you select that you'll have the ability to have uh, this phone send you a notification in one hour to call that person back next we'll take a look at the mail application and the first feature that Apple has added here is the VIP and what this allows you to do is assign certain contacts to be VIPs and these are going to be people that you would consider to be very important maybe it's coworkers or family members and what this feature does is adds a blue star next to any message that you receive from anyone on your VIP list. This will ensure that you don't uh, miss any messages from uh, people that you would consider to be important. Another interesting feature or a change in the mail application is that there's no longer that uh, little refresh uh, the mailbox icon there that used to be in the lower left hand corner. Now all you do is scroll up and release and it will refresh your mailbox for you. And then one other feature that Apple has added in the mail application is the ability to quickly add photos or videos. So you double tap as if you were going to uh, copy or paste something and you scroll over until you find insert photo or video. This is going to take you right into your uh, camera roll and you can go ahead and choose a photo that you have in there and it's going to put that right into the message for you. This is a, a lot better than the way it was implemented in iOS 5 because you would have to copy or paste something or you'd have to open up the photos application first so it makes it a lot easier to be able to do it directly from mail. Next I'll show you the new changes in the Safari application. Uh, so the first one is an offline reading list mode and this is going to be great for anyone who has an iPod touch or a Wi-Fi iPad only model uh, that will lose internet connection when you're on the go. So let's say you're reading about the new MacBook Pros that Apple released today and you're about to lose your internet connection. You can open up the options menu, you can choose add to reading list and then let's say we go uh, back out of here and we turn Wi-Fi off and then we just turn on airplane mode to remove my cellular data connection uh, as if I had an iPod touch 
uh, that lost its Wi-Fi connection. And then we'll go ahead and close this page out. And then if we open up the uh, reading list section, you'll see this page right here that we just uh, added to it. And it's going to go ahead and load up an offline uh, web page for us to continue viewing. So that's a nice feature. Uh, another feature then is uh, full screen mode. So if you tilt uh, or you change your iPhone into landscape view, you'll see the little full screen icon right there. It looks exactly the way it does in line. If you select it, it's going to remove of the uh, menu bar down there at the bottom and allow you to have a full uh, content experience with no uh, distractions in the way. The last feature that we're going to take a look at in this video is the do not disturb feature, which I currently have on. And when it is enabled, you'll see that little moon icon right next to the time at the top of the device. This feature disables, from, disables notifications from disrupting you at any point in time, but it's different than turning notifications completely off because you still will receive those notifications as soon as the Do Not Disturb feature is turned off. Uh, this is great, especially uh, because you can set uh, a certain time every day for this feature to be set. So let's say you're going to bed and you don't want text messages or emails to disturb you while you're trying to sleep. You can set it so that it will go on every night at a certain time, and then when you wake up in the morning, the those notifications will be available for you to read. Also, when you have this feature enabled, you can still allow calls from certain people if you would like to. And also with repeated calls, if someone calls twice, you can allow the second call to come through because the phone, uh, because they called twice, it might show a sense of urgency. So those are the features that we're taking a look at in this video, but there's definitely a lot more to look forward to, like cellular data and FaceTime, uh, shared photo streams, accessibility, the redesigned app store, iTunes store, and uh, the iBook store, and much, much much more. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe so you can see the other ones. Also, please like the video and I will see you guys in the next one.